This program was taped on March 5, 2011, six days before the nuclear disaster in Japan began unfolding. The clear lesson of Chernobyl and now the Japanese disaster, all nuclear plants should be shut down. They present a clear and present danger to life on Earth. No more nuclear plants should be built. Taxpayer subsidies for nuclear power must be stopped and we must embark immediately on an energy program of efficiency and full implementation of solar, wind, geothermal and other safe clean energy technologies which are here today and render deadly nuclear power completely unnecessary. Chernobyl, a million casualties, next on Enviro Close-Up. Welcome to Enviro Close-Up. I am Carl Grossman. This coming April 26th marks the 25th anniversary of the Chernobyl nuclear plant disaster. Meanwhile, the nuclear industry worldwide is pushing for a revival of nuclear power, and this very important book has been published, Chernobyl, Consequences of the Catastrophe for People and the Environment, and it concludes based on now available medical data that between 1986, the year of the accident, and 2004, 985,000 people died as a result of the disaster, and more have been dying since. With us is Dr. Janet Sherman. She's the contributing editor of this book, which was authored by a noted Russian biologist, Dr. Alexei Yablakov. Vasily Nestorenko and Alexei Nestorenko. They're both from Belarus. Welcome, Janet. How did these people die? I mean, we're talking a million people dead from this nuclear plant accident. How? They died of multiple different kinds of diseases, from cancer to heart disease, brain damage, uh, thyroid cancer, but many, many children died in utero, in other words, before they were born, or died of birth defects after they were born. How did these scientists determine 985,000 deaths as a result of Chernobyl? Based on medical data that were available to the scientists. Now, what we've heard, frankly, since the accident from the International Atomic Energy Agency, which is the the global group which is supposed to, to regulate and promote nuclear power. The casualties of Chernobyl, well, currently the IAEA, International Atomic Energy Agency, on its website says maybe in all be 4,000 people dead. Now that's quite different from 985,000. Why this, this discrepancy? Well, they released a report uh, called the Chernobyl Forum, and they only included about 350 articles uh, available in the English language. But Dr. Uh, Yablokov and uh, the two Nestorenkos looked at uh, well over 5,000 articles, and uh, abs the people who were actually we hate to use the term, but boots on the ground. People who were there and saw what was going on. Uh, we're talking about uh, medical doctors, scientists, veterinarians, uh, epidemiologists who saw what was happening when people in their communities were getting sick and dying. There's another international agency, the World Health Organization, WHO. And indeed, the book charges that the truth has not come out on Chernobyl from the WHO. I mean, 
forget about the IAEA, but from the WHO because of a, an agreement between these two agencies. Can you elaborate on that agreement? They formed an agreement in 1959 that has not been changed where one will not release a, a, a report without the agreement of the other. Now this is like having Dracula guard the blood bank because the WHO who is charged with World Health Organization is beholden to the IAEA before they can release a report. And what the IAEA, I mentioned before, it's it's there to regulate nuclear technology around the world, but it was also set up to promote it. Promote it, uh, And it evidently does not want anything from WHO, which would uh, indicate that nuclear power is not good for, for one's health. That's right. And that this needs to be ended. This agreement needs to be stopped. Let, let me go right to you. Now, you've devoted your life to the impacts of poisons. I mean, that, that's been your specialty. Mm -hmm. You're a toxicologist. Here, you're, you're editing this book. You're, you're going through all this scientific data. This has to be a million dead. The Chernobyl accident, the biggest technological disaster in the, frankly, the history of the world. It's true. How did you feel as you, you, you looked at the data and you put this book together? Well, I realized it was far worse than I thought it was. And um, that not only were um, people dying of cancer and heart disease, but every single organ in the body, whether it was immunological or lungs or cataracts or skin, everything was adversely affected. But not only people, every single system that was studied and not all were, but every system that was studied, whether it was humans or fish or trees or birds, bacteria, viruses, wolves, uh, cows, every system was changed. Every single system without exception. And this is reflected in, in this the book. It's not just human effects. Many of the birds and animals had similar adverse effects as humans. Now, most people aren't familiar with, I mean, we all know, I think, at this point, that radioactivity and cancer go together. But like heart problems, heart disease, how, how does that connect? Well, the most, one of the most fascinating things that I learned in the, when I was uh, rewriting the text of the book and going through all the data was one of the scientists, Bandashevsky, had done a study and sh that showed that the cesium-137 levels in children were the same as he had found in test animals and were causing heart damage. He reported this, and for his work, he was put in prison. And he was put in prison? He was put in prison, yes. And he analyzed, uh, this, uh, these are animals that were... Well, he did the original study on animals, and then he was a pathologist, and he was studying the results in children, and he found the same changes in the hearts of children who had died as he'd seen in the animals. And when he reported it, he, his thanks was he got arrested and put in prison. The radioactivity from Chernobyl, Russia, Belarus, the Ukraine, these were three places where, I mean, a lot of the radiation was deposited. But according to this book, again, based on data, I mean, those poisons came down all over the world. Yes, they did. And the greatest concentrations came down in Belarus, Ukraine, and Russia. But the greatest amount, more than 50%, spread around the entire northern hemisphere, particularly uh, went north into um, Scandinavia and um, eastward into Asia. As far as China. Oh, yes. The book concludes, indeed, that the deaths as a result of Chernobyl occurred not just in Belarus, Russia, and the Ukraine, but, but all over. Oh, around the entire uh, the world, yes, of course. How long will this continue? I mean, some of the poisons that were discharged 
they're going to be around for millennia. Oh, yes. I mean, just the two main ones, cesium-137 and strontium-90, have half-lives about 30 years, so they'll be around for three centuries at least. But many of the isotopes will be around for millennia. You're right. The book, however, stresses that the, the worst damage occurred in those early months, particularly those early weeks when the fire that, I mean, there was this huge fire that wasn't, I mean, they weren't able to put it out, was blazing. Well, yes, but still, the, right now, the, the reactor is leaking into the water supply. The structure that is around the reactor right now is not sound. And if there is so much as a mild earthquake, there's a chance of it collapsing. So this reactor is by no means uh, covered up or safe and not leaking. Now this, this book, this, this, this book telling the truth about Chernobyl was published by the New York Academy of Sciences, by the prestigious organization. What about the rest of, uh, I don't know, the scientific establishment? Uh, what's been their, how can I put it, stance, their position in getting this information out on Chernobyl? Well, some groups have been very um, interested in getting out the information, and people allied with the nuclear industry would just assume that nobody knew anything about what's in that book. How did Dr. Yablakov and the doctors Nestorenko embark on this, this journey with you of looking into the impacts of Chernobyl? Well, they have been aware of the WHO IAEA agreement, and uh, actually there have been people 24-7 outside of the WHO headquarters in Geneva trying to get this stopped, this agreement stopped. And these people have been demonstrating? Demonstrating, yes. Picketing because of this, agreement. Well, what, what, what the book describes as a collusive agreement between the IAEA and WHO. That's correct. Uh, Alexei Yablokov was a consultant to both Gorbachev and Yeltsin on the Chernobyl issues. And as you know, the data were covered up for about three years right after Chernobyl happened because the governments did not want anything to be known by people, and they collected almost nothing in the way of data. Alexei became interested in that and started collecting information. I think there's something like 150,000 publications that have come out and they utilized well over 5,000 in writing this book. Many of the, res of the sources in here have never been translated in English, mostly were in the uh, languages of Ukraine, Russia and Belarus. So this is entirely new information that has not been uh, available to uh, the Western world. You talk about the impacts on people, on animals, on plant life. Are the mechanisms different? No, the, essentially the mechanisms are the same. Um, exposure to these radioactive isotopes are taken up by plants, are taken up by birds, taken up by humans, and damage the cells, kill some of the cells, damage the DNA, damage the genetic mechanisms of uh, species. Now, if it kills a cell, then it's not going to go on to cause cancer. If it damages a cell, it can go on to cause cancer or a birth defect in a human, a bird, or even, add, uh, quote, birth defects in plants. Plants have been altered by Chernobyl. Now, you just mentioned how the consequences were a lot to the northwest because the winds were blowing towards, of all places, Scandinavia, uh, yes the lapse, I mean, people who had nothing to do whatsoever with, with Chernobyl or nuclear power, they got hit. Uh, there, were, there was rain and there was fallout and, 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 and so forth. Uh, speak about those consequences. Uh, they have, a, a recent study has come out shown that, ch uh, that children born in Scandinavia uh, at the time when the Chernobyl fallout occurred are less likely to graduate from high school. They have intellectual impairment. Probably the most serious consequence of Chernobyl that I'm aware of is that only 20% of children in Belarus are considered healthy. That means that 80% of the children in Belarus are not well 
compared to the data that they have of children before the Chernobyl accident. 